Hello my lovely people and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well and having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. Today I have a very exciting video for you and something that you have requested. So I'm really, really excited to share my knowledge and my experiences and all the things that are in my brain and let you guys know. So if you've not really read the title or know what this video is about, I am building a house at the age of 22. Now I am building this with my partner so there is two incomes, that is a big kind of shining light to let you guys know that unfortunately I wish I could but I'm not building this by myself. Now I also want to make a very very big disclaimer right now to say this is by no means necessary financial advice or ways to tell you what to do with your money. This is just my experiences, my opinion and the way I have navigated the housing market at the moment. So these are just my tips from how I have worked through this. It may not work for you, that's okay. Please make sure if you do want to go down the path of building a house to consult your own financial advisors and finance people, make sure what you're doing is right for you in your own circumstances. So now that we have gotten that out of the way, I want to just, oh, I have so much going on in my brain that I want to share with you guys today. So another main thing that I really want to make sure that is clear to you guys, I actually do not get income from any kind of social media. I am still baby channel at this current stage, maybe one day, but at the moment, I am doing this and building a house off my normal nine to five full-time job that I have. And the same with my partner, he has a normal job of just the kind of everyday, I say normal, but you know, you know how it is. So that's just a bit of a disclaimer as well to know that I don't have this like random amount of cash from like social media. It'd be great, but it's not. So I have had to be savvy and that's what I wanna share with you guys today. So my number one tip for you guys, now this may be a no brainer, but is make sure you know how to save. Now, this could be just making sure that you're really diligent, you're consistent with it. This could be $50, $100 a week or a fortnight, wherever you get paid, putting that aside and making sure you do not touch it for whatever reason. Now, the way I have been able to kind of work my own personal savings is by having a normal everyday savings account that I can dip into whenever I want to buy something or things come up that you need to pay for, that's the one to go for. Then I have my house savings. Now I've started this from when I first ever got a job. So it doesn't matter if you haven't been saving for that long, but make sure you have your savings starting now, that is as good as ever. So start your savings for your house. I also personally have a long-term savings account. So this is something that if I was to ever be out of a job, that one's what that is for and then a little travel one. Now, this is a lot of savings account, but I find this really helpful to be able to kind of divide my monies up really evenly. I like to know where each bit is going and be able to tweak it as I need. So that might not work for you, but that's what works for me. And I really like to kind of be able to move things about and make sure I'm getting the most out of my money. Now, the other important part of knowing how to save is where can you cut your expenses? Where are your, Where is your money going? pretty much. So is it going to shopping? Are you buying lots of food? Do you drink and smoke or vape or you know, where is it going? Do you go out a lot? Do you go night clubbing? Do you go out and do things? So where is your money going and what is a priority for you? Now this is very personalized. This is your own priorities, your own things that you like to do with your money because it is your money and you can do whatever you choose with it. Now, personally, I don't smoke and I don't really drink that much. So that really saves a lot of money for me. But I found a lot of my money was going into shopping and food. So for me, I stopped getting takeouts. I made sure to limit the amount of money I was spending on food and on clothes and making sure it's a bit more thrifty with all my money. So that might have been meaning Maybe I have to rewear the same outfit a little bit more, having to go to the salvos or thrift shops, going to cheaper brands instead of the expensive brands. So being a bit more smart with where my money is. Now the sun has just gone behind a cloud and oh, is it coming back? It is. <laughs> I was like, it's getting really dark all of a sudden. All right. Ah, oh, let there be light. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Oh, we're getting very bright. <laughs> so yes. 
make sure that you know where your money is, what is a priority for you. If you want to go out and you enjoy being able to go out with your friends and spend that money there and that's important to you, then that's okay. But maybe it's limiting that, maybe it's thinking about the other ways that you can kind of save or be smart with your money. Okay, we are working with some natural lighting here and it's also getting towards the end of the day. So if the lighting gets a bit funky, we know why. I apologize. I can't control the sun, unfortunately. So, you know, and I don't have the fancy lights. I would love that. Maybe that's something I should get, but we're saving our money. <laughs> so anyway, so another part of knowing your savings is actually starting to buy things now and be smart when things are on sale and things that you really like are timeless, buy them now when you have a little bit extra cash. So when you do move into your house, you have things to go in with. <laughs> You're not having to spend all this money buying all the basic necessities. Now I have a very big kind of pile taking up another room in my parents' house. If you guys ever want to see what I have bought, comment down below. I would love to show you what I have because it's quite the collection now, if I don't say so myself. Um, so yeah, comment down below if you would like to see what I have bought for my house in preparation. So the next tip that I have for you guys is to utilize the schemes and the grants that are available. Now in Australia, we actually have some really nice ones going on at the moment. So my biggest tip for you guys is to assess all the grants, all the things that are available, go to a financial broker, check out what is best for you and what you can do yourself. Um, and really utilize that. It's a great way to be able to get into the market and get that upper hand into actually just getting a house, getting that first step, it can really, really help. So make sure you read all the terms and conditions. That's my big key point for you guys, because sometimes some of the grants will actually kind of give the government a bit more, you know, hold on your house or your land or whatever you have. So be careful with what you pick, be very smart about it. And yes, see a financial broker, make sure you are getting what is best for you. So that is a very, very big one. And I think in Australia, we're very lucky that we have those schemes to help us. So if you can, utilize that. It's really, really helpful. The third thing that I wanted to say to you, and it's such an important one, which is just take the leap. Make sure you do it. Just absolutely, if you want to do this, is there something that's really important to you, a passion that you're really, really excited to do it, just go for it. Just absolutely shoot for it. Shoot for the stars. And if you miss, you hit the moon or whatever the saying is. Because <laughs> honestly, you're never really going to have enough savings. You're never going to have enough money. You're never going to be exactly in the perfect situation to be able to buy or afford things. Now, I say that very lightly because obviously you have to have a certain amount of savings. You do have to have certain things. You have to be able to afford what you are buying and what you are building. But in saying that, know that you'll never be able to just well, most likely, you will probably never be able to just buy a house outright. You'll be very lucky if you can. Congratulations if you can do that. Because <laughs> what the biggest thing is, is just making sure that you're in the market. That first step is going to be the hardest one to do. And I'm still currently in that as well. It is not a very easy thing to do, but that's okay. Make sure you just make the start to happen. If you really are determined to do it, make sure it happens. Now, I do also want to say something, but now, this is my experience and everyone that I know is that you're never gonna be rich enough. You're always gonna end up poor. Let's be real. Like, I don't ever make yourself to the point where you're not good, but like, you're gonna always struggle when you first move into a house. You're always gonna be not having lots of cash or lots of things going on in those first few years. But I do think it's better to struggle when you're a bit younger and you have a bit more time on your hands to be able to kind of Get, do the extra hours, get the extra bit of work to be able to get that bit more money to pay things off. I think it's a little bit easier, in my opinion, to do that when you're younger than when you are older. So that's just a personal choice. But in saying that, that does not mean that you can't start now. So big one there, just take the leap and absolutely go for it. The fourth thing that I want to tell you guys today is make sure that you do not overcapitalize. So this comes in many forms. It pretty much means don't live without your means. Don't spend too much that you can't afford. So this might mean 
you might not be able to afford all the nice beautiful things in your home like the curtains and the blinds maybe you have to hold out and have some newspaper on the windows for a few months until you can afford it maybe it means you don't have the nice furniture you have the cheaper furniture that's okay i think we have this culture where you have to be having all these beautiful nice clean brand new sparkling things and it's okay if you don't have that honestly make sure that you're living what is best for you and financially the best situation for yourself now also within that that means knowing your suburb knowing where you are living what the other houses are kind of like in your area if they are really high-end houses you kind of want to match that so you are capitalizing the right amount in your own home now the same goes for if you are in a suburb that maybe doesn't have people spending as much money and investment on their own house putting it back into their house then you don't want to go for the really high-end beautiful things because then you're going to be really high up and you're probably not going to get that money back if you ever were to sell or move on from that house so making sure to know what the right balancing act pretty much is for your suburb and your own living means and if that means that you're living in a place that has a higher you know pretty uh, expensive neighborhood that's great but maybe you can't get there right now maybe you can build to that it's something to look forward for the future now I say this because it's really important because I think yeah we have this culture where it's meant to be beautiful or nice or even the renovations I think there's a big thing about renovations and they're made out to seem like they're really cheap now don't get me wrong you definitely can do renovations on a budget and it can be great if you know how to do it but it's a lot of labor it's a lot of time and a lot of effort and sometimes it actually ends up being a little bit more expensive but you don't notice the amount so much because it's over a spread out period of time so something else to consider as well so living within your means making sure you're doing what's best for you don't dig yourself in a hole too deep that you can't get out of so one of the final things that I want to give you guys as a tip is know your builders know the people that you're going to be working with know what their priorities are how are they do they value what you want are they going to achieve what you want and how are they going to be flexibility wise so knowing who you're working with is so important because it can completely change the way that you experience building a house so make sure that you are trialing out all the different companies make sure you go and see what each place can offer now they most likely won't be the perfect company I can't tell you you know I'm going with this company and they're the best because they work for me really well and I really love the way that the company I'm going with has been but they might not work for you so find out which one is best for you trial them all out see and pick and choose what is the best thing but also use the other companies to kind of know well you know what what did they think about the one that you're leaning towards or what are the things that they might be able to match or not match and kind of trial out test out the field and see what is the best for you the place that i have went with they were really really good at accommodating our budget and knowing how to fit everything in the means now with this as well i had so many questions i had so many things that i wanted to know or ask i asked every possible question under the sun so if you have any questions put them in the comments below and i might be able to answer some of them because i asked so many um that could be a whole other video honestly it could become a series at this point but i asked all the questions do not be afraid of asking questions do not be afraid of changing your mind do not be afraid of just completely scrapping everything and going to the beginning and starting all over again so make sure you're getting what you want and everything that you want and desire out of a house but in saying that be realistic make sure you're getting the best space the best quality the best things that you can within your budget um, and if you're with a good builder they will be able to do that for you and also make sure you have fun with it go through the display home have a wander about pick and choose bits and pieces see how the places and the different companies are utilizing the space utilizing the shape the light everything like that building a house will always be scary it's never not going to be scary or at least not in my experience i still have moments where i go oh my gosh this is so much money what am i gonna do this is forever ah it's like it's really scary don't get me wrong like i think there's an idea that this shouldn't be scary it is it is a nerve-wracking thing it's a big commitment but it's really really important and it's really really great if you want to be doing that 
it means the world and knowing that you're in the right place the right location the right house for you knowing you're doing with it in budget those things are so important so make sure that you're you pat yourself on the back to know you know this is a really big achievement and well done for being able to get to this point now i do also want to say make sure when you are doing this that you make quick decisions in some places now that might not mean you know you have to decide on the right flooring or the right this or the that some things you can take your time and that's okay take the time that you need but sometimes when it is like jumping in make sure you're quick about it if you know in your heart you're confident with the fact that you want this and it's an important thing to you make that jump now i can't explain to you how much and how important that is in this climate now this is also the current status things that are changing every day so i don't know if that'll be the right situation for you but for me it was and my partner was just let's go for it and see what happens and so far it's working out a bit it's uh it's happening so yes that's that's another really big piece of advice that i have for you guys now i've really to be honest only scratched the surface of some of the things that i have learned and know about building a house since starting this process so if you have any more questions please in the comments down below let me know what some of the things that you have or some of the questions that you might be wondering if you've never experienced it because you really don't know until you start so please in the comments below i'll be more than happy to actually film another video and honestly probably make it a, a whole series if it gets to that point um but to know what are some of the things that you guys are just really really curious about i'll be more than happy to answer that for you guys so thank you guys so 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 much for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i would love to see you guys back here and if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I know it's been a chatty video, but I really appreciate it. And I hope that you'll be able to take some of the things away from this and use it in your own life if that works for you. Again, financial disclaimer, but <laughs> if it works for you, I hope that maybe this has been a bit helpful. But thank you guys again, and I will see you next time. Bye!